We are learning about sync layers. Uh, now sync layers is a feature that is available only in Harmony Premium 14 um, and it is essentially giving us another way to uh, link layers together. So um, in the previous tutorials we've learned about how to use the different art layers to separate those different items and still be able to animate them. But in this one, we'll have a look at another way uh, that we're able to do this. Um, so right now, I've gotten rid of some of the things that we had done previously. I'm only keeping my mouth layer right here. So I didn't come and remove the artwork. I still have everything in there including the tongue and the chin, only now they don't look so good because they're on different art layers. But since we already have our art in here, um, I'm not going to come and change that right away. Uh, we're going to hold on to those as we, uh, as we go. Now, instead of having just this one, um, as you can see, I've removed the clones that we had previously. I'm going to come and create a new layer. So you just come and press Control R or Command R on Mac. And from here, I'm going to create the tongue. So add and, and then we're going to add the chin, just as we had before, except now they're going to be their own distinct layers. So we have the chin, oops, the chin and the tongue. And we're going to create pegs for each of these. So I'm going to select these two, Control Shift P, or Command Shift P on Mac. And then we're going to connect those to the mouth peg. And we can simply come and connect them for now to our composite so that we're able to see it in the timeline as well. Okay, so from here, all of our drawing information is in here. In here, we have nothing. Um, and we want to link these two layers to the mouth so that these three are all working together. So what's going to happen when we sync the layers is they're going to start sharing the timing. So the timing is happening inside the timeline, meaning that when I decide to expose, uh, let's say, drawing QF, underscore HG, it's going to expose the same one under tongue and under the chin as well. Um, so at the present time, I don't have anything in here. So I don't necessarily need to go and create all the information right away. What I usually like to do is I select those two layers, so the ones that have nothing in it uh, and uh, not necessarily right away the one that I want to link it to. So these two are in here. I can go on my timeline, right click, and I'm going to select sync layer width. Now, once I select this, I get a drop down menu that allows me to go and select which one do I want to sync it to. Now, if we remember, we want to sync it to the mouth. So I have top basil group mouth right here. You want to be careful if you have multiple layers that are named uh, the same way. So make sure that you pick the right one. And then we're going to press OK. Um, now you may have noticed right here a few things happening. Um, I have these two little squares showing on each of my sync layers. So I can even see it on the pivot point as well because these are all linked together. Now the reason why that is, if we remember, the pivot point is a clone of our mouth right here. And even though these two are distinct layers, I've just synced them together. So I see every time that I select a layer that is synced with some others, I'll be able to see these uh, little dots right there. If I unselect it, I'm no longer seeing them. So I really have to, um, to make a selection to be able to see which ones are uh, synced together. Because if I had other sync layers, um, 
that weren't necessarily synced with the mouth, I would want to be able to see those as well. So they're not a permanent thing. You really need to go and select the element. Um, another thing that you may have noticed, if I select it again, uh, this is actually visible in the timeline over here. So under this little column right next to the squares, um, I can see when I select one of my elements, which other layers are synced with that layer. So if I were to select the chin, I'd be able to see which other two are synced with that. And if I didn't have anything synced with it, for example, the glasses, uh, I'm not going to get any uh, of those symbols. Now, uh, a third thing that's happened as we synced our layers, if I go on the tongue, for instance, remember how we didn't have any drawing substitutions inside of both of our layers right here? Well, right now, what's happened because we sync them together and we want the exposure to be exactly the same, um, it's created the empty drawings on there so that we can come and put our art inside those layers. Um, so at this point, what I can do is go on my mouth layer and using my select tool, I can go from one drawing to the other and make sure that all of my elements are separated in the proper um, in the proper drawing layer. So I'm going to remove all the tongue information from those drawing cells, and I'm going to come and place them inside the tongue layer. And just as well, I'm going to get all the information from the chin layer. I'm going to cut them and come over to the chin. If you want to keep them in the underlay, that's fine. Usually I like to keep everything in the line art, so I'm going to come and paste it inside the line art right here. So you're not going to see a different except a difference except for the fact that the chin now holds the, uh, the chin layer and inside the mouth you should have only the mouth. Okay, so um, looks like now we have all of our separated elements. So we have the mouth, the tongue, and the chin, each on their own separate layers. Now, as you can see inside my drawing substitutions window, I have um, the separated drawing. I no longer have all of the information inside of my drawing substitutions. And depending on the frame where I'm at, um, of course, some might be empty. For example, here, I can't see the tongue, so I'm just going to leave the strong cell empty um, and the chin is on every layer, so I'm going to be able to see it here. Um, now, the advantage of doing this method is um, that you can have your own pivot point uh, on each of those drawings. So, for example, if I take my drawing pivot tool and I go on my chin here, I'm able to place the pivot point on each of those drawings um, at the proper position. And let's do the same on the tongue as well. So I can have the tongue which is moving around a bit more than the chin. And I can come and position those pivot points. And of course, since these are new layers that I've created, I'm just going to make sure that I um, send the pivot point to the parent peg, just like so. And because this is its own layer, and it's just the, um, the exposure of the drawings that is linked together, um, it's going to be able to read its own pivot point. Um, and as opposed as before, where I had to get the same pivot point for all layers because they were actually the same drawing layer, so the same drawing information. Now, um, with this, one thing that sometimes isn't quite as easy, and with the mouth it's not so, so much of a, a big deal, um, is that when I browse through my drawings, if I want to make sure um, which mouth do I want to, uh, to select, for my character to um, to show. 
is that sometimes it's not always going to be that obvious. Um, for example, if I uh, if I were to select the chin and I say, oh, I want to use the, uh, the mouth with the clenched teeth. Um, okay, well, it's not exactly giving me that much of a hint. But um, luckily, if you're making use of your camera and everything is set up already the way that you want it to, um, you should have no problem uh, being able to get what you want. Um, so now I've separated all of these layers and what I need to do is only go and do uh, the same setup as before, except now these are just separated. So if I go on a, another frame and I change the drawing of my mouth to be, um, for example, QF underscore HD, it's going to change all of the different frames that are linked together to that frame. So let's do our setup for just um, separating these different things. I'm going to um, go and add my node library right here. And let's go in our favorites. I'm going to get a color override if I want to separate the, uh, the line from the color. But at this point, you know what? All of your layers are free. There's no longer any information in here. So even one thing that you could do is just take the, um, the color inside of your mouth and you could cut that and come and bring it in the color override, uh, not in the color override, but in the color, um, the color art layer. And instead of using a color override, I get rid of this, you could come and get a line art node, which will show just the line art here. And I can come and get a color art node. And we already know that this is the back of our mouth, so we will have to connect it um, behind the tongue which already kind of looks uh, better. You need to make sure when you're using line art and color art though, that you go and do um, the same thing for every mouth. So you're gonna go and get the color art and paste it in the, uh, the color art layer for every single one where uh, it is the, uh, the color of the back of the mouth, not necessarily the teeth, because we want the teeth, the, the teeth to appear in front of the tongue. So you just come and cut that, paste it for all the different ones where you might see the tongue. So suppose I have that and okay. Um, so now from here, really easy, all you need to do is go get a cutter And we want the tongue to be cut. So if we remember properly, it is the right port of the cutter that receives the element that is going to be cut. We're going to keep it connected over here. And we want the back of our mouth to be the one doing the cutting because we want this to stay on the inside so we're going to bring that connection over to the color art. We're not disconnecting this one and bringing it over here because we won't get uh, any color anymore. So we want to really leave that connected in the back and we have our tongue sandwiched in between the line and the color art. And we want to invert that cutter because at the moment um, the tongue is being cut by the back of the mouth, but we want the opposite of that to happen. So invert, and here we have it. We have uh, our entire mouth, and we can still move every piece separately. So whether it is the chin, the tongue, or the mouth, um, if you wanted to have multiple layers, um, one for the teeth, for example, this character doesn't really uh, have very apparent, uh, a very apparent set of teeth. 
so um, it's not as useful but definitely could be something that you'd want to do for the upper teeth, lower teeth, uh, and so on and other facial features that might move along with the lip sync, for example, the chin here. Um, so yeah, that's about it for uh, sync layers um, and doing it on the mouth. Um, you can also apply it on the hands as well for all of the different things that we've seen with using multiple layers. Um, so go ahead and use it on anything that needs to be synced together.